Hi everyone and welcome to this new tutorial. Here I'm going to explain some of the tricks to perform a camera tracking in Blender in a better way and I will also go through the basics of the camera tracking. So first of all let's go through the... you go to clip, open clip and then you, you bring whatever clip you, you have to. And what you will notice probably, like here you see it with full color, so the first trick would be you usually see it with the with transparency, so you would see the the video like this way, and you would be like, well, why does it look different in the camera than in the, the actual clip? So you have to go to uh, select the camera, then go to camera settings, and then turn full up the the alpha, so it's not transparent. Then also notice that it usually comes by default with a different color space. It usually it sometimes comes with a row or it could be with a linear but you see that the color differs from the real clip so in my case i i like to put uh, s rgb so it looks the same than the original but before putting markers in my case the, the, the clip is quite long it's like 30 seconds but it's important to notice that you see here the blue this blue part is the prefetch part of the video if the video is prefetched then it will be much faster so in my in my case you can see that not all the video was prefetched because it's really really heavy. So one of uh, the second trick would be to improve the let's say the performance, and then you have to go to preferences and if you go to system, you will see that the sequencer uh, cache limit is eight uh, gigabytes. It was four gigabytes for me before, and, and I, I increased it to eight gigabytes. And then also another optimization. Let's say when you when you render, it's important to put it in GPU compute, so it will as well compute faster when you're rendering uh, some frames uh, you need to go to the system again and then in the cycles render devices um, go to coolant and select the, the graphics card and the cpu so you will render with both of them then uh, for this purpose we will use the cycles and just coming back to the to the markers and to the to the video itself so the third trick is if you see here there's a y-axis it's quite matching the the whole direction of the scene so so for that, it's important to set uh, some markers with those uh, with these lines. In my case, it's not perfectly aligned, but but it gives you an impression at least. So that will be my origin, then that will be my y-axis, and then this one here will be my x-axis. So for that, you usually select the marker. So if this is the origin, I would say this one is uh, y-axis. So I will I would select this one, and then you see the whole scene moves. Um, in my case, I, I set it up before, so there's no need to. And then it's also uh, something to to notice. Well, to, to set new markers, you press Ctrl and click, and then you set in the new marker. Uh, the minimum amount of markers that you need is eight, uh, and, and I would not recommend using many more. In case any of the markers will be hidden at any point, you can just uh, make sure and, and select 10 mark different markers. You can as well set uh, detect features, but I would not recommend that because it selects a bunch of features, but then you have to watch each one of them. And in my case, sometimes if I set the window, but then there's light outside, then it just gets messed up. So it's either if you plan the markers yourself, you put, uh, you, you put the marker there and you watch each one of them, but only eight to 10 markers, like let's say 10, it's a perfect number. There are some other parameters that you need to adjust, which are in this case a motion model. Uh, you have to set it most likely to location rotation. I mean, if you were to use a tripod and your camera was, all, was only rotating instead of translating as well, then you would leave it to rotation, but that's yes. And the same with my previous frame. That's because I will be correcting uh, during the, the scene these uh, frames because it, they get unaligned there are some markers that are kind of hidden, like for instance this one in the window. Uh, uh, some of them may just disappear or vanish, or this one is actually quite uh, not well set. And usually you have to find big contrast. So I've tried with this red button and the black uh, device, but so just find some contrast. For instance here as well, it's a red with blue, 
uh, here it's a black with some corners as well then you would already have everything ready to uh, well to, to create the, the tracking like uh, if you go to track and then you set here track markers so if you press here it will go as, uh, all the video long and tracking the markers that's why it's important to have the prefetch video but you will notice that uh, some of them get lost so another trick is to have this area when you when you set the marker if you don't like, enable this search area you see there are two squares so the inner one is the area that it needs to to match and the second one is where it's going to find this area so if you go to um, click display and then enable search then this second square will appear uh, there's also something that is important to, to notice that here are some parameters of the camera uh, when you record with your phone you Personally, I don't really know the focal length and I don't know like, sensor width, any of those stuff uh, parameters here. So yeah, well, the, the way you can find your um, focal length is by setting up a very simple scene where, with a very uh, sharp markers that it's going to be only used to, to find the, the focal length. And then you would go here to solve and refine and then you would set focal length and optical center. And then when you refine, you see it will calculate your focal length in my case it was already like pre-calculated so i know it's around 19 so then i would get this number from the test scene and go back to the official scene and use the same value so now that you have everything set up uh, you, what you need to do is to set the floor so again you select three markers and then you set floor when well i would create this basic floor here and you would need to adjust it to the to your scene so it matches especially for the shadows also it's important to set the scale so the, the camera will know um, a bit like how to track better and how the, the real camera is moving so it can move the virtual camera I've chosen this one and this one and it was around 2.6 meters then once everything is set up you set it as background you set up the tracking scene and, and all this will, will be set up okay but you would have your plane and it would be already automatically a shadow capture what does it mean? Um, so, so once you, you do that, uh, your plane and another cube that you can delete will go to the background and then in the foreground you will have the camera and the root node. So some things that you need to set up here are the light, uh, to match the real light and try as well to match it with the um, like Z distance and like all the distances properly. Okay. And once you have the, the light set up, to make it more realistic in my case, uh, what I've done is to put as well the, the table so I can uh, catch the shadows for the table and also the bread because I will make this uh, bee to fly um, over the, the bread and then land somewhere around here. And then one of the problems I face, and, and that's another trick, is that even if it's a shadow catcher, you don't really see any shadow, like even if I go to render. So I move the, the ground to the to the foreground and then I will start seeing the shadow. But that's, that, that only works uh, with uh, well, while making up the scene, the virtual scene. Before rendering, you have to put it back to background. Then there's another important thing, because by default, you won't see this transparent. And then for that, you have to go here to render properties and go to film and then enable transparent because otherwise you will see the whole scene with the well in this case it's a brownish so well just enable transparent and then it will work properly as a shadow catcher regarding the light and the shadows that's also important because um when you if you want to match the real the real scene like if you go to if you go here you see the table has some uh, like softer shadows here and, and harder shadows and if you want it to match with the with the object, I mean with the virtual world with the real world, you have to play both with the light settings, which are here. I mean, I put a above of 200 bucks. I, I need to put it strong enough, otherwise uh, the B would look very dark. But then, if you put it too strong, the shadow may be much stronger than the table than the real shadows. So that, that this is when you have to play with the environment light. It's also important to match this uh, color with uh, with something around, so the indirect light will affect the, the objects. So like I said, in my case I, I added this uh, table here, and I make the, the beep fly over the table and land here. The more interaction you have with the real world, the more realistic it will look. Then the final step would be the compositing. So for that you have to go here to the compositing tab, 
then you press F12 to render once and now you will see it here. If you don't see it, make sure that you have backdrop enabled. If you want, if you feel like the rendering is taking too long besides those uh, GPU compute and, and other parameters, you can go here to performance and to tiles. It comes by default in 64 and it means the size of the, each one of the tiles that it's prepare, uh, starting well, it, like rendering <clears throat> are that, that size. In my case, I prefer to make the tiles smaller. So if I have um, different threads, they can paint the, the important part in a, a much faster uh, manner. So it's not like one process is, is painting the whole B, but there are several processes because it's broke that, broken down into several uh, pieces. So I had to re-render the scene because if, uh, the B was too close to the camera and then the shadow was not seen. Uh, something that I wanted to explain, one, of the, one more trick is uh, this one here. So by default it would come with only one uh, shadow layer and then the, the, the B, well that's the, the background, okay, and then the footage of the camera. So what I've noticed is that it was really hard to play with the, I mean I didn't want the B to be too bright and I didn't want the shadows to be too soft. So if you come here for instance and, and you disconnect this one here, the, like it would come by default and you, you pull back the, the factor to zero. Uh, you will see that this, this would be the original shadow. It's almost not noticeable and it doesn't really match. Well, it kind of matches the, the soft shadow of the, of the table, which is not too bad in this sense, but it's hard to, to follow. If you don't pay too much attention, you would like kind of like miss the shadow. So what I thought, like, let's make the shadow stronger without touching the illumination at all. So what you can do is you, can, you come here, you duplicate with Shift D this layer, the shadow and then you have the second layer and you create this alpha over. So it means uh, you're combining the two alpha, like putting another alpha um, image on top of the previous one. And that means how much influence the second shadow will have over the, the first one. So I put it up to one and then now you will see that the shadow is quite stronger, like it's twice uh, as strong as before. And then once you are done, you would go to a render, you would render the whole, the whole scene, so the frame rate is important to match the real uh, footage, and you would just uh, control F12 and you would export the whole scene. It renders and then you can go to the um, uh, video like sequencer and, and you, you can import and create a, the whole video. So that's uh, everything until here. If you have any questions, just uh, please write any comments and I will try to help you as soon as possible. I hope you enjoyed the video. And please don't forget to subscribe.